hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Fallon and welcome to another life in Cyprus video so if you're new here please don't forget to click the subscribe button below and turn on your post notification bell that way you can get notifications whenever I drop a video so in today's video I'm going to be talking about the cost of living in Cyprus first things first i would like to say if you have any opinion or if i say something you don't really agree with it you're free to like uh, leave a comment in the comment section below and whatever i'm saying here today is based on my own experience or based on whatever i and you guys i've been here for a little over two years there are people who've been here for 15 years and all that so whatever i'm giving you is based on my own opinion i don't know about the lighting today but anyways let's dive right in so yeah, we do. So when I'm while talking about cost of living in Cyprus, I'm going to be talking about accommodation. I'm going to be talking about transportation. I'm going to be talking about healthcare. I'm going to be talking about your social life, food, uh, foods, and all that stuff. So let's begin with accommodation. Normally, before you go to a foreign country, you need to figure out firstly where you are going to stay because you can not sleep on that tree just like you can sleep on that bridge and all that stuff so in terms of accommodation in cyprus i feel like accommodation kind of varies i won't say it's expensive or it's cheap because houses are in categories if you want an expensive house then you're definitely going to get an expensive house and if you want a cheaper house then you're definitely going to get a cheaper house so i'll try to like explain it based on I've lived in three places for now and three different categories so I think I have a little clue as to how the different categories of housing is in terms of pricing so if you're coming to study as a student I believe the best way for you to like um, minimize your expenditure you can look for a house like here we have two plus one three plus one or um, one plus one and all that which definitely means you have two rooms and a living room or you have three rooms a toilet and a living room and so on and so forth if you don't really want to spend more what i advise you to do is you can come look for like a three plus one and then you look for people to rent out the other rooms to or you guys can join me pay for a three plus one so for a moderate price for a three plus one room here in cyprus mind you i'm in northern cyprus i would say it should be around twenty one thousand. that i think that's the minimum and that's for a normal house very normal maybe an old house but not that old but it's okay it's comfortable you pay for six months or for a year a complete one year so if you're paying the twenty one thousand turkish lira for a year and in a three room so you guys can share and at the end of the day you're, you pay 7,000, the other person pays 7,000 and the other person pays 7,000. That way it's going to be a lot easier for you and it's going to reduce your expenditure. And another thing guys, in terms of accommodation, uh, it, the prices also varies with the city in which you live in. So if you live in say Famagusta for example, you don't expect to pay uh, your rentage the same or almost the same as someone who lives in Guinea, in Lefkosha or in Guzeliot. So the prices of accommodation varies with respect to the city in which you live in. So some cities are way more expensive than the others. For example, if you live in Guinea, which is like the most beautiful city here in the northern Cyprus, you should expect to pay prices uh, you should pay, to pay more in terms of accommodation you get what i'm saying just because those are really busy cities and that's like the heart of cyprus like in terms of beauty and all that that's like the part of cyprus which kind of feels like you're abroad and it has many touristic potentials like beautiful beaches vacation sites and all that so if you live in a city like that you expect to pay more accommodation than living in an ordinary city so in terms of transportation because yeah normally you need to transport yourself from one city to the other or to and fro school provided you don't live around your school take for instance my school is in nicosia and for those who live in famagusta they can't walk to school 
you know it's difficult it's like a 45 minutes drive and it's quite a considerable distance per se so with that we have school buses you understand if you live in the capital city where our school is located then you have little or no problem in terms of transportation as well you also have to understand that i feel like if you live in the, the capital city say in Lefkosha or Nicosia, Nicosia as some my colleague a, a transportation is cheaper just in case you're not using the school bus like currently with the COVID situation you can't access the school bus without a student ID whereas initially anyone could just hop into the school bus and transport themselves wherever they wanted to but currently you have to show your school ID in order to get into the school bus in Lefkosha you have buses that can transport you from one city to the other you can get a bus from Gunili to to the city center you can get another bus from the city center to Yeniken and to whichever city you want to go to whereas in Famagusta it is different in Famagusta if you want to transfer yourself from point A to point B you need to use a taxi which is more expensive a taxi in Famagusta costs say like 20 Turkish lira whereas here you can use a bus to go wherever you want to go to and pay just 4 lira 50 kush so now the thing is this for those who are studying in take for instance you're studying in cyprus international university and you live in famagusta buses leave probably just in the morning three buses leave in the morning and then in the evening say from 6 p.m or from 5 p.m back and if you have classes in between you can't go to school at 7 in the morning when you have a class at for you're definitely going to need public transport with public transport you have to pay there's no card for public transport and you pay whatever anybody is paying you understand that's for those living in Famagusta and maybe in other cities where the school bus is not that mobile so in terms of food stuff it's advisable probably you buy your groceries in bulk and then you store them probably in the refrigerator and if you have house meat which you guys understand each other that's the case with me you guys can jointly buy monthly or weekly you understand depending on how much you consume on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis so you can buy in bulk and just store them so that way it's easier for you for foodstuffs yeah i wouldn't say it's that expensive but i would say it's not the same like in cameroon you understand especially if you have to buy stuff like african food stuff that one is super expensive i will do a video subsequently maybe after doing with my weekly or my monthly shopping so i can just show you guys the prices in which we get stuffs here that's african food stuff because it's really very expensive here but then your personal stuff like your toothpaste your body lotions and all that good all the other personal stuff you can buy that one personally to be talking about bills i won't say bills and bills and i'm talking of bills i'm talking of electricity bills i'm talking of uh, what else water bill that and your internet bill i will say internet here is cheap usually people prefer to do like the home internet you can go to any uh, company which supplies internet and then you make a contract with them maybe a six months contract a three months contract and then they will do your internet in the house electricity here i won't say it's cheap i won't say it's expensive because it depends on how much you consume you get what i'm saying so in my house which is a three plus one we pay at least 300 selfish lira a month for electricity bill I live in a three plus one and we are like four of us in the three plus one and so we divide to be we split it by three or by four which makes it easier for you to pay so the more electrical appliances you have the more you're going to pay for electricity so on to water bill i feel like water is like the cheapest here on the island because here we pay water bill not every month it comes every other month and the amount is usually not that significant you get what i'm saying there are months where we pay 60 tl each for water bill there are months where we pay less there are months where we pay more so and we use water a lot that i won't say we minimize our use of water we use water a lot still 
the water beer is uh, usually the lowest I'm going to talk about health care because normally you need to stay healthy and all that so when you come as a student you're required to do a resident permit you understand we call it mujarat here i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly but you're required to do a resident permit after your registration in school and all of that so once you have your resident permit you have access to free medical care if i'm making sense but now the thing is if you're sick or whatever you go to the hospital they do all your tests it's free and you see a doctor for free you don't have to pay for consultation you don't have to pay for tests but then you have to buy your drugs if the, you buy either from the hospital the, the the state hospital or you can buy from private pharmacies if you're buying your drugs from the state hospital the amount is usually not the same as someone buying from an outside pharmacy but now the thing is this once you go to the hospital to like do tests and all that the hospital does not provide all the tests i don't know if that's making sense if i'm putting it correctly yeah so there are some tests where you have to do them outside in a private laboratory because the hospital cannot uh, conduct those tests it's not like they cannot i don't know that's what i've noticed that when you go they write you a bunch of tests and some of them the hospital tells you you can do this in a private laboratory outside then you bring the results so once you have your resident permit you have free medical care you have access to free medical care or facility or whatever to an extent not a hundred percent in my own opinion but personally i would rather go to a private hospital for whatever is bothering me because my experience is so far with the private with the state hospital has not been the best yeah it's not really been that bad but it's not been the best as well so personally i would rather go to a private hospital now in a private hospital it's a little more expensive because you have to pay for consultation you have to pay for your tests and all that now i've been to a couple of private hospitals the first one i went there just to consult like to see a doctor i had to pay 250 turkish lira i'm gonna list it up in the screen in dollars and in euro and the second one i went to with my student ID, they gave me a discount so i paid 170 tl for consultation so as you can tell the prices varies with hospitals and now with the private hospital you have to pay for all your tests from your pocket because it's a private hospital and all that then what i like about the private hospital is that they dedicate their time their effort their everything like they give you the best service as you pay for it i have a friend who had a baby in a private hospital and i had another friend who had a baby in a government hospital their experiences were different you know, they told me about it and that of the private hospital was actually the best so i can't really go into details with that and in terms of social life you know we cannot forget social life now we must add the aspect of njoka and all that yeah because once in a while it's good to go out blow out some steam and all that so in terms of social life let's talk about alcohol beer and all that I feel like beer is a little at the cheaper end here, so beer is cheap in Cyprus. So while in Cyprus, you can, if you're a fan to beer, if you're a beer person, you can drink as much as you want because beer is really cheap. I don't know the price of a bottle of beer because I'm not really a beer person, but having talked to a couple of people, a couple of my friends who are into beer, they made me understand that beer is at the cheaper end. Yeah. So yeah, that's it in terms of social life. We have nightclubs here, and I feel like it's like entry. It's usually free, but then you have to buy drinks, which is not cheap. I believe it's the same everywhere, even in Cameroon. Yeah, I don't really go out a lot, so I can't really tell you guys much about social life. And uh, talking about the resident permit, the resident permit isn't free guys, you have to pay for it. So you have to pay for your medicals, you have to pay for your tax, yes tax or insurance, is it tax? It's your tax which includes your insurance, in, which is not free guys, so your medicals is 
the last time I did mine was around 500 and something Turkish lira again I'm gonna list the price on the screen and your tax usually varies from 180 to 200 Turkish lira I don't know if the price has changed but one thing I know is that the prices fluctuate so in total I, I think for you to have on average i would say for you to like have a resident permit currently you need to have at least 900 to 1000 turkish lira i'm gonna list it above on the screen for you to have a resident permit and it is only valid for a year from september to september you understand so that's it with resident permit so yeah that's it I believe at this point it comes to an end of this video. So what do you guys think is the cost? Do you feel like the cost of living? Here I'm not telling you guys if the cost is high or it's low. I'm just giving you guys an insight on how uh, the cost of living in Cyprus might look like. Just in case you're still interested in coming of which I don't encourage anyone to come to Cyprus. But anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it and leave a beautiful comment below. And feel free to ask any questions you want to ask me concerning Cyprus. If you're interested in coming still to study or whatever, feel free to leave a question down in the comment section below. And I'll always be glad to be at your service. That being said, I'm going to see you guys in my next video.